The £1 billion Type 45 destroyer set sail from Portsmouth on Friday and stopped over at Gibraltar before embarking on its hazardous mission to the Persian Gulf, where it will take over the responsibilities of its sister ship, HMS Defender. Daring has a crew of 260 men and women and 8,000 tons of military air warfare technology. So HMS Daring is deploying to the Middle East, so the Arabian Gulf and the Indian Ocean, to integrate with the American and French carrier groups that are operating in the region uh, to act as strike forces against uh, the Daesh and IS targets in the Middle East. We'll also be doing a, uh, some maritime security patrols. We'll be looking to counter the illegal arms trade, drug smuggling and people smuggling across the region. I suppose that for some of the men and women on board this is their first experience of a major deployment. How are they feeling about it, do you think? Excited. Uh, there may be some sort of uh, first night nerves, but I think they, uh, they look to those more experienced around them for, uh, for what to do, what not to do, uh, and looking to enjoy their time away from home. A first on this voyage is the deployment of a Wildcat helicopter on board a warship east of Suez. There's some work we'll have to do to see how the aircraft performs, but the, the tests that we've done so far all seem to point out the aircraft will perform very capably. So how do you feel uh, about the mission? Are you a little bit apprehensive about it or just excited? I think we're all very excited to see how the Wildcat actually performs uh, with its uh, upgraded sensors uh, and engines in comparison to the Lynx. Uh, I've been out in the Gulf before in the Lynx and uh, it certainly showed that she was starting to get tired and old. So we're very excited to have the, uh, the new aircraft, massively uprated engines, new radars, new cameras, all this sort of stuff. So really looking forward to it. It'll be very interesting to see how it operates in the hot temperatures particularly. Um, we're pretty confident, but I'm sure they'll come back with some guidance on how to operate the best altitudes. And that's part of what we're doing. Uh, we don't have the finished article yet. We have a very, very capable aircraft and one we love flying. Um, but there's always a little bit more we can do with it. HMS Daring and the five other ships like her in the fleet have not been without controversy. Their engines are prone to break down in warm conditions and Daring herself suffered engine failure in the mid-Atlantic six years ago and again in Bahrain in 2012. Uh, the Top 45 destroyers have had some issues with their propulsion and power systems. That's now being worked at uh, over the last two or three years with an improvement project and the funding for that was brought out in the last defence budget. OK, so no worries going into what is essentially almost a war zone, really, with a ship that's liable to have engine failure. I'm confident in the power propulsion plant that I have in Daring. I've got a great team of engineers on here who are very highly trained, and they've got the stores and support that they need on board to sustain us through the nine months of all the away from home. As is now customary with visiting Royal Navy vessels, HMS Daring carried out sovereignty patrols of British Gibraltar territorial waters both on its arrival and departure from the rock.